Once upon a time, there was an electric unicycle whose reputation was so evil that many people feared it could never be trusted. Tales were told across the land about how this wheel would wait until you least expected it, then it would try to kill you by smashing your face into the ground and knocking all your teeth out with gravel. Groups gathered on forums to call it names and warn people away from it, like baying mobs shouting for the local witch to be burned at the stake. Others, however, proclaimed this was a wheel of fortune, the one wheel to bind them all, the ruler of all wheels, they're precious. Surely they can't all be right, can they? Well, hello and welcome to Wheel Life, the video diary that helps you to understand what life is like living with an electric unicycle. And in this episode, I'm going to take a look at this, the much talked about in motion V12. I'm going to tell you all about it, all its features, its pros and its cons, compare it to some other wheels and tell you what it's like to ride. Now, depending on what you've heard, this wheel is either a fairy tale or a horror story. Well, stick to the end to find out what I think. Well, it hasn't killed me yet, sorry to disappoint you, but I have ridden the V12 for about a thousand kilometres now, so I do feel as though I'm in a good position to give you some honest opinions, having ridden it for some considerable distance and in some tough conditions. So let's get started. The V12, what exactly is it? Well, simply put, the V12 is the most advanced unicycle that InMotion have ever made. And no, it doesn't have suspension, and that's all that people seem to bang on about these days. But it does have so many things going for it that I believe this is more than a contender for any other wheel currently on the market. Now, the V12 has a relatively small 16-inch diameter wheel, and that makes this a compact and portable wheel, certainly when you compare it to wheels like the S20 or the Sherman and the Abrahams. And that's great because it means you don't need to have a chiropractor on speed dial every time you take a gamble and try and lift it in and out of the boot of the car. This is a sprightly 29 kilograms. It is slim, it is graceful, and it's very easy on the eye. Now, the first thing you notice when you switch on the V12 is the utterly brilliant display screen and interface. Now, other EUC manufacturers, please take note because when it comes to a display screen, this is exactly the kind of thing we are looking for. It's ram packed full of features. It's even got a little pin code facility, just like your mobile phone. When you turn it on, you've got to enter your own private pin number. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of that, but I can see the sense of it, particularly if somebody might want to try and turn it on when your back is turned. It can be a bit fiddly if you've got lots of things in your hands or you're wearing gloves, but you can disable it so you don't need to have it in there and just well done in motion for thinking outside the box and putting something like that onto an EUC. Well done. Now I'm in very bright conditions today, but even still you can see the numbers on the display really clearly. And when you're riding along, that's really important. All the information you need is right there. Importantly, it tells you your speed, but it also gives you your battery readout in three different formats, three ways. Yes, it gives you your battery voltage. That's just there to make big old riders feel justified. It also gives you a percentage number and a nice strip of light that indicates how much battery you've got. That is perfect, that could not be improved upon. Cleverly as well, it also calculates and gives you an available mileage remaining. But that is so ridiculously unreliable, you might as well consult with the medium or the tea leaves. So just ignore that one. But then if you swipe to the right, it gives you even more information. It tells you information about your trip. It tells you your average speed, your highest speed on that trip. It gives you a temperature reading for the wheel. It tells you how many miles you've done in total. And all that information is there right under your nose. You don't have to keep getting your phone out to check those details. This is anorak heaven. If you ever go out on a group ride out, this is exactly the kind of stuff you want to talk about at the pub when you stop for a drink halfway through the day. But it keeps getting better. So from the home screen, you can press your settings and here you'll find stuff that you would only normally find through the app on your phone. But this allows you to adjust your maximum speed setting, like up to full, speed alarm, yeah, up to full, blah, blah, blah. Uh, even the pen pedal sensitivity and you can adjust the inclination by degrees one at a time of the tilt of your wheel, forwards or backwards, setting up just as you like it 
right in front of your very eyes. This thing is the bee's knees. Honestly, this, I mean, show me another wheel on the market that can do anything close to this. There just isn't one. Maybe then it all falls down when it comes to the ride of this. What's the ride experience? Maybe this thing is all talk and no trousers. Well, no, you'd be wrong if you thought that. Now the standard V12 comes with a 2,500 watt motor that peaks at around about 5,000 watts, giving plenty of capacity to deal with sudden spikes of power. Now you might be thinking that numbers are all that matters and you're comparing this with other wheels like the S20 that's got a 3,300 watt motor. But don't forget, this motor's only driving a relatively tiny, teeny 16 inch wheel and that's more than enough power to make this one of the most responsive and alarmingly quick off the mark wheels that I've ever ridden. This is like a wheel on acid. If this was a cartoon character, it'd be called Roadrunner. <laughs> Top speed is reportedly 70 kilometers an hour, but that's 43 miles an hour in real money, and nobody should be doing that kind of speed on an EUC. It's only gonna end badly. In fact, subscribe now and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss my next video, which is going to be all about a crash I recently had when I was going 45 miles an hour. What an idiot. And in motion are bringing out a high torque version of the V12 2 with a, a motor of 2,800 watts, which should give you some of that additional grunt and front end power that you need in off-road conditions. Now you might be worried that a small 16 inch wheel is too tiny for doing high speeds but it really doesn't feel like it is. They've put a fantastic 3 inch tyre on here that feels really good but it is a bit twitchy and there have been times when I've experienced the dreaded wobble. I genuinely think we need a better name for that wobble that we get going on. Now, in F1, they've got that bounce that they've started to have in cars and they've called that porpoising. So I think that we shouldn't call it a wobble, we should call it after something really cool. So if you've ever seen one of those frilled necked lizards when they get running, look really weird and it reminds me of that feeling of wobbling on a unicycle. So I think we should start calling that movement lizarding. So let's see if we can get that trending. Don't call it wobbling anymore. Let's call it lizarding. So yes, there have been times where I experienced lizarding, particularly when going at high speed or hard braking. But honestly, the more you ride, the more you get used to it. And it does improve with time. It seems to become less and less noticeable. In fact, I can't remember the last time I experienced it. And the V12 has got two riding modes that you can flip between right from that very clever display screen I was talking about earlier. It's got an off-road mode which supposedly gives you more torque and upfront grunt to get out of those tricky situations and up some steep inclines. And it's also got a cruise mode which delivers the power in a more smooth way and allows you to brake in a way that feels like you can really dig into those brakes and have much more control at braking at high speed. Now 99.9% .9 of the time I keep my wheel set on the cruise mode. On off-road that works just as well too. Now as for range, well this is a pretty decent range monster for a wheel of this size, you will not be disappointed. It's got a battery size of 1750 watt hours and that's pretty consistently given me a range of around about 36 miles on one single charge. That's taking it from 100% to around about 15% at which point the battery management system kicks in and starts to tilt you back. So look at the foot plates. So the foot plate is a pretty standard sandpaper finish, but it's really good and it opens and closes without a fight, which is good. Now you can adjust the ride height of the V12 into three different settings. I've kept mine just as it came out of the box because I think it's perfect as it is, but it can be a bit unusual or a different type of feeling if you've only ever ridden non-suspension unicycles. Now I do believe that at time of recording, those unicycles do still exist. But the ride height I think is great if you can get used to it, particularly if you've only ever ridden smaller wheels. And that extra height is actually really good because it means your feet are clear of just about every obstacle. And the V12 can turn around in really tight circles without scraping the foot plates on the ground like bikers knee pads. 
It's got a Bluetooth speakers as well, and that's great. But if you're the kind of person that's riding around with music blaring out, come on, what's wrong with you? Have a word with yourself. The only vehicles that should be riding around with music playing are ice cream vans. The headlamp is utterly brilliant in every sense of the word. In fact, it reminds me of a Gillette razor blade. Now, back in the olden days, one razor blade seemed to be good enough. But then for some reason, you need to have two and then four. And now people have got razors with so many blades, it looks like they're shaving with a Venetian blind. And the same principle appears to apply here when in motion, think about headlamps. Why have one when you can have four? But all joking apart, they are absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's like riding around on a portable sun. It's got these really nice pulsating lights on the front and the sides, which increases your visibility all around. And it's also got rather a simple but yet brilliant kickstand. So I've never ridden a unicycle with a kickstand before and wondered if it was a bit of a gimmick. But having ridden the V12 and experienced the kickstand, this is seriously a game changer because you no longer have to worry about where you're going to park it as long as you've got a flat surface you can put it anywhere and it's really robust it pops down when you need it and if you remember to put it up it's out of the way when you're riding i have ridden away a couple of times with it still down and felt a bit of a fool afterwards but you soon remember to keep popping it up uh, when you set off now i'm going to just test how robust this kickstand is because there is a worry that it might just knock over if you were to tap it and i'm going to test it in the industry standard way and that is to whack it with A French stick. So I'm armed with two French sticks. Now the aim of this test is to see whether the wheel will stand up to some punishment, particularly to simulate the act of a dog maybe brushing against it or a toddler who doesn't know better. So I've put some towels down on the ground in case it does fall over because I'm not a monster, but I'm going to have at it with as much energy and gusto as I can and as much energy and gusto as two French sticks will let me give it. Let's see what happens. So, I think that test proves beyond all reasonable doubt that the kickstand on the V12 stands up to the toughest of punishments. The V12 has got a motor cut-off switch under the handle, so when you lift it up, the wheel doesn't spin and threaten to destroy everything in a 5 metre radius. It's got a unique design for a trolley handle with a button underneath there that unlocks and then clicks and locks into place. The handle is nicely centered, it's not off to one side, and it's a big chunky handle with a nice rubber uh, end to it, which means it's easy to hold and easy to control. Just watch out when you close it down that you don't trap your fingers in there. I've done that a couple of times. Now the V12 is waterproof rated to IPX5, which means you can take it out in the wettest of conditions, knowing it will perform perfectly well. Now, so far, I've been telling you a bit of a fairy tale, but what about all those horror stories? Well, you might have heard people reporting issues with the V12, it cutting out and throwing people to the ground. Well, the official message from InMotion is, and I quote from a press release they gave in January this year, that they say, we've received a few V12 cutout cases recently. After deep investigation, we figure out the root cause is the MOSFET chips. They go on to give some advice about how to do a spin test to check your wheel, but they do say stop riding until you've done that. Now, I'm reliably told that that was an issue with the first batch of V12s. So if you're buying one now, that mistake has been rectified and you should be okay. Now I've got a V12, that I've done the spin test, it's past that and I've ridden it and it has been flawless so i can't complain uh, the bigger issue for me is about the customer support and i've heard stories about people waiting 
very lengthy periods of time to get satisfactory responses from in motion which is why i always say if you're going to buy a wheel go through a reputable distributor which is why i recommend speedy feet uk because they give you great customer service great advice and telephone support they'll even give you 25 percent discount on parts or if you bought through them and they'll give you a trading option if you want to trade up to your next wheel they'll also give you importantly a three-year extended warranty on your wheels if you're buying a v12 my recommendation is check out speedy feet uk so is this the one wheel to rule them all well no when i compare this to the kingsong s20 this isn't a wheel i want to jump off a large drop or smash into a steep bank it's just too pretty and it's just too nice and no it's not going to go the massive distance of those really big wheels but still 36 miles is impressive and don't forget this is small light agile and incredibly fast so then let me sum up for you the v12 i honestly can't think of anything about this wheel that doesn't make me want to smile now normally in my reviews i do a list of the pros and the cons but honestly i can't think of anything about this wheel that i want to change or improve and yes it does have a bad reputation that hangs around like a bad smell but the other day i saw some footage of the s20 exploding into an impressive ball of flames on the streets of new york so tomato tomato so i'm going to sum up in this way now for me the v12 is a slim beautiful elegant wheel but it's still full of power it's not post-apocalyptic uh, heavy and rugged like the sherman or the abrams or a big heavy glass of stout neither is it too small that makes it twitchy and unpredictable like a vicious shot of tequila no this is well thought out it's refined it's elegant like a beautiful glass of merlot and just like the glass of merlot if you're not used to it and maybe you try and go too quickly with it it has got the potential to get a bit wobbly sorry a bit lizardy and to throw you into the hedge but honestly once you've ridden this this will become the wheel by which you compare other wheels big is no longer beautiful so that's it for this episode thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you have then don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe and please don't forget to hit the bell for notifications because you can watch me next time explaining all about my high speed horror crash and what to avoid and look out for in those situations but that's it for this time see you again take care